Well, hi there. I'm here today with one of the most unusual and coolest lizards found anywhere on the planet, and that is the Solomon Island monkey-tailed or prehensile-tailed skink. Check this guy. Now this one that I've got with me today comes to us from Animal Ark in Orem, Utah. They're one of the great pet stores and we're always grateful for the way that they help us out. We always recommend them. This guy is a juvenile. So they actually got him as a captive bred baby and he's growing up. They are one of, and I believe the largest of all the skinks. And skinks are cool lizards and some of them like blue tongue skinks get very, very large. These guys are even bigger, so he's got some growing yet to do. One really crazy thing about them is that they're an herbivore, and so unlike most skinks, which eat at least predominantly insects and other live prey items, these guys are going to feed exclusively on vegetation. That's pretty neat. They have the coolest type of tail, which it is possible to have. This guy here, he's a little bit grumpy, but hopefully he's going to let me show this off. They have a prehensile tail, hence the, the name prehensile-tailed skink, or monkey-tailed skink. And prehensile means that they can grab with it. They can wrap it around things and grab with it. And they can actually support themselves really well by this red prehensile tail. How could you not love that? They are, even when they're grumpy dudes, adorable. So adorable. That face, I don't know, they look like a reptile sloth to me. I've heard people say that they look like frogs. They're just, I mean, they're amazing. It's hard to describe how amazing the prehensile-tailed skink is. That look, how could you not adore it? Even, even mad at you. I mean, you just love them. Except for when they've latched onto you. They bite hard, like little demons. But we'll cover that here in a second. As always, the big question we want to help you answer is, is the Solomon Island prehensile-tailed skink the right pet lizard for you? Overall, we give the Solomon Island prehensile-tailed skink a score of 2.8 out of 5, which isn't a very high score, but we want you to understand why they get that. And that, that will come down to our five categories, which are handleability, care, hardiness, availability, and upfront costs. So let's start with handleability, shall we? We give the Solomon Island prehensile-tailed skink a score of three out of five for handleability. These guys are a lot like lychees, the lychianus geckos when it comes to handleability, which is that some of them are really good and some of them are virtually unhandleable. This is one of those, he's actually not that bad, but uh, he would probably bite me at least once if I picked him up. And they bite hard. They bite really hard, especially as adults. I mean, they will definitely draw a considerable amount of blood and leave a fairly good wound. It's it's amazing jaw pressure that they've got, but it's kind of to be expected from a great big skink. However, from an herbivore, a little surprising. Camp Cannon actually has a really great video. He keeps some prehensile-tailed skinks, and one of them got a hold of him really well. And so you can see the kind of wound you would expect if you're handling a grumpy prehensile-tailed skink. Even when they're nice, and a lot of them are very nice and very excellent for handling, their claws are so sharp, it just feels like tiny little needles all over you. So that's going to be a downside, even if you've got a nice one. They are really good at holding on with those sharp claws and that prehensile tail. They're probably not going to fall off. And they're also not very prone to running away, and they're not super fast if they decide to. So you're probably not going to lose track of your prehensile-tailed skink. The worst thing that's going to happen is you're going to get poked with those little needle claws, and it's going to bite the heck out of you, because sometimes they do. When it comes to care, we give prehensile-tailed skinks a score of 3 out of 5. One thing that I really like about these guys is that they're crepuscular. Crepuscular means they're not nocturnal, awake during the night. They're not diurnal, awake during the day, but they're mostly active dawn and dusk. And that is actually, for most people, a really great time for a reptile to be active, because you know, if you, if you sleep at night, for example, if you're one of those, and you, say, work during the day or go to school, 
you're probably not going to be around to watch something that is nocturnal or diurnal very much, but they tend to be active at about the times that you tend to be home, early morning and evening, and that's really excellent. They need a lot of floor space. Uh, they'll make good use of that. They spend a considerable amount of time down on the ground, but they also like to climb a lot. So you definitely need places where they can get up high and close to their basking spot as well. They need a pretty large enclosure because this is the largest skink in the world. And on top of that, they need floor space and vertical space. So it's going to be a pretty big enclosure, but I mean, not as big as you'd need for, say, a tegu. You're going to keep humidity up to proper levels using misting and also a substrate that'll hold some humidity. So those are going to be things that are really important as far as care. Dehydration can be a problem with these guys. And you're going to need to feed them a variety of fruits, but especially vegetables. All kinds of different greens, mustard greens, turnip greens, collard greens. These are really good staples. But one thing that these guys actually eat as their staple diet in the wild, which is pretty uncommon, is pathos. And that's excellent because pathos are actually a really commonly available houseplant and they're very easy to keep alive and easy to grow. So you might be able to grow a considerable amount of the food for your skink in your home, potentially even in the enclosure. And that's, that's really neat. They will also eat some eggs and I would add on top of the diet for them for sure, uh, vitamin and calcium supplements. So these are going to be things that'll be really important for your skink. These guys uh, are frequent and as I understand it, aromatically distinct defecators in that they poop often and it has a weird smell. So that is definitely something to keep in mind. These would definitely be a great candidate for a bioactive enclosure because they're not going to eat your isopods and springtails that you have in there. The isopods and springtails will do really well in the sort of enclosure that you set up for a prehensile tailed skink and they'll help take care of some of that mess. However, you will need probably fairly frequent substrate changes even in a bioactive enclosure. On top of this, they're going to need UVA and UVB basking lights. So those things are, are really important for these guys. You can't skimp there. Of course, if you can afford one of these lizards, you're probably not going to skimp anywhere. When it comes to hardiness, we give these guys a score of four out of five. It sounds like as newborns, they can be fairly fragile, but unless you're a breeder, you're probably not going to be dealing with one that young. And once they get through that stage, it seems like they're pretty solid. They can be a bit prone to stressing out with excessive handling or if they're in a really loud, busy area. So, you know, try not to stress them out too much. But with moderate amounts of interaction, they should be just fine. With a proper diet, temperature, and humidity, these guys should be really solid lizards for you. When it comes to availability, we give the prehensile-tailed skink a score of 2 out of 5. These guys are pretty darn hard to find, to be perfectly honest. Online, uh, directly from a breeder, those will be your best bets. Every now and then you'll see them at expos and very rarely at a pet shop. Like I said, Animal Ark in Orem, Utah has this guy and I'm not sure I'd ever seen one in a pet shop before that. When it comes to upfront costs, we give them a score of 2 out of 5. This is an expensive, expensive lizard. They're almost all captive bred. In fact, all of them I know of that are being legally sold in this country are captive bred, and that's excellent, but there aren't that many people selling them, and they are really cool. So they're very expensive. And their enclosure is also fairly expensive because it's big and it needs to be well potted. One thing that's a really great option for them are going to be cork rounds, like what you see him on. Uh, they can both climb on those and in those. They, they really add a lot to an enclosure for these guys, and you're going to need a lot of those. They can be a little bit expensive. The rest is really not too bad. You're going to need that substrate that holds some moisture. You're going to need a water bowl, these climbing branches and cork rounds, and then, uh, you know, the lights, of course, and those lights are fairly expensive. Those UVA lights are moderately expensive. UVB lights are very expensive, especially over time because you need to replace the bulbs every six months to a year and the bulbs are pretty expensive. But do not skimp on those. And with a lizard this expensive, I mean, we're talking over a thousand dollars generally for these lizards, you're probably not gonna skimp. And that is why the Solomon Island prehensile tailed skink gets an overall score of 2.8 out of five. These guys are excellent. And if not having to feed insect feeders to a stinking rad lizard 
is worth a heck of a lot of money to you, and you can't resist an absolutely adorable face and a prehensile tail on the other side, then the Solomon Island prehensile-tailed skink might be the perfect lizard for you. As always, like and subscribe. Don't forget to check out our Patreon, and we hope to see you real soon. Don't really want him to latch onto me, but I want to, I want to bond with him a little. Hey, buddy. Oh yeah, yeah. You are a big grumpy desert. Dialing on you. Woo! Hey, hey, hey! Yeah, you got your mouth open. There you go. Yeah, get. Something about. Woo! You are quick when you want to be, aren't you? I thought so. I thought so. <laughs> you were slow playing me, weren't you? That we haven't done videos about because. Bless you. Very <laughs> close. Yeah? Yeah, nice kid. Whoa.